Have Matt, a convention. Matt, are you are you serious about this this podcast? I just want to know, really. Why? I just well, I just feel a little bit deval- undervalued by you. You're like but never the, around. But you've got this whole, you know, that's your complex, isn't you're it? You're never you're... around anymore. Am I not, Matt? No, you're busy. You're not. You don't come back late. Right. What? Come back late? Smelling a cheap perfume. <laughs> The other podcasts spray on themselves to attract you. I know it's like. All right. Okay. Yeah. I just I'm, want I'm, you. I just want. I just want to know you're committed to me. I'm, of course, I'm committed to you, um, but I'm also committed to other things. Like what? Like my child. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like um, your, David Wagner. Your girlfriend. Ty. Yeah, she's got to get a mention. They're mm. coming in in a bit actually. No, really, free. really excited. I know. Because it makes it real. Because th- then I think I'll forgive you. Okay. I think I'll be in a position to actually let you go if it is true that you are leaving. I've, I've become this. one of them dead annoying people. Like, I remember I'd always sit there and you'd see people on Facebook and even like my sister who yeah. will never listen to this <laughs> and hopefully my mum won't tell her. Um, but my sister and I'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake, what are you, like everything we don't need to, oh God, so what? One of them woke up at night. Oh, baby. You know I mean? yeah, people just chat, like the, all the parent stuff you see in there. And I was, before I was always like, God, I would never be that loser. And do you know another thing on the streets when people have got prams? Yeah. And they kind of like, like get out of my way, I've got a pram. I, I, used to, I almost used to think, get out of my fucking way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I didn't ask you to have that baby. Yeah, exactly. This is a communal it's not my football. fault. I didn't impregnate you. Yeah. Um, and now I have impregnated someone. Right. And I've got a baby. I can feel myself slowly, slowly <laughs> becoming one of these twats. <laughs> Well, he's, I, I'm literally fucking. Like, I've seen how cute she is. I mean, look, if I, she looked at her, she's fucking amazing. She is beautiful. She is look, really it's all right beautiful. to be proud of your baby. It's not all right to take up 80% of the footpath, though. That yeah, is not I okay. I know, in doorways and like. Yeah. I don't know. It's like. But I yeah. get that. I'm still. I haven't got children. My missus has two kids. Yeah. I don't have my own children. I probably never will. Um, just don't you, think. You're responsible enough. Yep. In fact, I remember 100% we, we spoke about this before. One of the great comments was that um, about when you were saying you were wanting to be Can't a godfather remember. or play a prominent role in, in my little girl's life. And, this is a, and I had to go, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no. Yeah, but you know me. This this is a bit of a facade. You know deep down that I'm a responsible yeah, I don't person. Know about that, you're not that responsible. Give it. A, let's trial it. Let's see what happens. All right. I'll look after baby. Yeah. Or, uh, oh, we try it with my child. No, yeah, we won't do that. No, no, That's for a, just for a couple of days. Not even for. So Ty's going out for dinner tonight. Right. Right. With his couple of friends, and I'm like, all right, cool. I'll look after the kid. No problem. She's like, my mum's coming round. Mm. I'm like, why? You're going out. She's like, no, no. She's coming out to supervise. Oh. I don't know. I'm like, okay, uh, fine. So you're not having her. That's for sure. Well, you yeah, we can ask Ty, but I think I will. She'd, all she hears from you whenever yeah. she like. Checks out any ball street. Do you know what she hears from you? What? Strippers. Yeah. I'm not going to take him in Rhino. I'm not going to take her to a strip club. The baby. That's not allowed. <laughs> You've checked. It's, it's, it's yeah, not allowed. You have to do something else. Um, no, I mean, I, this is a thing that I've got with my mates. I'm trying desperately to be the godfather of a someone. Baby. Any, just anyone. I feel like I would, I'd, I'd be good in that role. Um, I think I like I'd be responsible. <laughs> Good in that role. I'll put it on my CV. Okay. So um, what were you driving at at the start then when you were accusing Just want to know you committed is all. That's it. Well, that's so this what podcast. I was driving at. Yeah, the, the, and yeah, just I feel me. half committed. Like, I, I do. It, you know this, like, because it, it's weird, isn't it? We started off this podcast um, and it was, we weren't talking about football. We were talking about the lives, that the guy behind the guy. You're talking to people. About... That, that happened to be relevant to football yeah. and even sport. So we spoke to lawyers, we spoke to Righty, The Beast, and a yeah. um, bunch of other people, you know, obviously uh, some of the guys, like our mates, like Robbie and Paul and Redmen and stuff like yep. that, Nicky. Um, but it's slowly, since we then became onto YouTube, I feel like we've lost it. Lost a bit of focus, yeah. uh, almost. Well, I think it was that, and that also the, you probably don't really need three people when talking to someone. You kind of both. I found us both at the time sitting. I would sometimes sit there while, while we were recording the podcast. I wouldn't say a word for thirty minutes. <laughs> no, well, I chat too much. No, it's not that. No, it's it just is. that the guest ch- ch- chats too much. Yeah. I quite like sitting here in front of you and having a chat. That's what I like. And and Ian yeah. Wright got in the way of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but obviously we're joking. But it'd become a bit yeah. about. Um, it's like 
I, I quite like, I think what I want to do really is I like to talk about the business of football. I'm far more qualified to talk about that and the business of sport mm. and business in the modern world from you know being an entrepreneur for people to develop a personal brand mm. making sense of social media how brands communicate you know we touch on a lot of that stuff which is the stuff i really find interesting i find less interesting who's going to win this saturday yeah unless we're talking specifically about this saturday and it's Huddersfield town at QPR oh yeah um f u james yeah um so i i think that I think we're going to have to split the two, and I think that we're going to have to go our separate ways at some point. Mm. And I think that you, we're going to have to then do a football podcast, and the business part of it, maybe we'll have to start to create a new page that just talks about that, because there's a lot of Ball Street subscribers and regulars that don't care about that stuff. The business side. Yeah. Some do, mm. I think, and we've seen that from some of the, the questions and the interaction. Um, and, I, so, and I think that, but, but I think a lot probably don't, you see. Do you think this is a good time to break the news, the fact that we're going to have to split our podcast and I'm going to have to go down this route talking about football and you're going to go down the more business-minded football? Well, like, I, I think it's more of it. So we just like chatted about that, didn't we, in, 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 in prep? Well, the coffee shops are available, mm -hmm. but that's the nearest. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I mean, it, look, it, it's not a set thing. It's not happening yet. But I think that almost what we'd like to do is to see it is to start a new channel, which let's just, I'm just gonna start it and put a link on it. It might not be a video on it. And what we'd like is for people to, can we put a link in? Yeah. So we'll put a link down. And just for those people that are actually interested in Ball Street, the business yeah. and the space, social media, entrepreneurs, raising capital, personal brand. Uh, Cause I think that there's lots of fun content that we could do there. And I think in it, I think, cause the world's confused about how to communicate right now. The world's confused about where attention is yeah. and about what, habit is you know and there's a like we're living our lives on our mobile phones doing this whereas traditional media is you know we're what we're spending time on our phones like this we're living lives like this mm. yet we all fucking respect the papers and the press and money gets spent in all these areas like that's what we give a fuck about and we don't yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and also Advert adverts that are intrusive, I mean, fuck's sake. Mm. So like, we don't want to be involved in anything to do with that. And, and we as people are pressing that cross, and we as people are going, all right, I'm I want to watch this video, oh, for fuck's sake, I don't want to watch this 30 second ad, I've only got 30 seconds before, fuck, yeah. you know, and then you're yeah. back on with your life. And I think that that's, the world's a really interesting place in that regard, and the industry, yeah. um, and, and sport is in a really interesting place. And that's what I'd like to talk about, and that's, I'd like to have conversations with, from people that we know on Snapchat to YouTube to people that work in media in various organisations and probably put all that stuff in one place. Mm. But also I think that the journey that we're going through, um, Ball Street as a whole, us trying to kind of collect a load of fans together to create scale, um, to create economies of uh, or efficiencies um, and to kind of actually do what we want to do as a business, that's what we're thinking about doing is actually peeling back the curtain and letting people watch that almost in a documentary style format that would be updated, you know, a couple of times a week. All right. So, so uh, that's what I think would be fun. Yeah. And, so we'll and, and throw and, a link in. Yeah. Um, and and we'll, so we'll put it in there. And you know, if you're interested in that stuff, go over there, click on it, subscribe, and then I'll start putting some content on there. Uh, if you're not, don't worry about it. Just stay here, stay on Ball Street, do what you normally do, and we'll. Um, and you know, right, cool. Flav and people uh, like Flav, like James and Robin, they, they'll all talk about who's going to win this weekend. You know? <laughs> Just hit the bollocks. Yeah. Um. You. You. I mean. You. You. This isn't the end, though, is it? You're still going to be on every now and then. Okay. Yeah. No. Just no. I mean, look. I, the thing is, and that's the thing too, isn't it? So we had a podcast for a long time, and. We actually just enjoyed it. It was always a nice break from the week to just yeah. sit there and chat to somebody often interesting mm. with some interesting perspectives. You know, like people like uh, uh, Troy Townsend, mm. you know what I mean? Raising a kid in uh, uh, that's trying to be a footballer and yeah. steering away from this stuff. Some really interesting chat. Absolutely. Um, you know, you're talking about that pop-up thing. Mm. I've had it when trying to watch some, some porn where um, <laughs> you, the, you know, you know, it's just, pops up <laughs> and then you try and pick in them and then you do tab opens and you're like Before you what know, do I, want? Yeah. I, I just want free porn yeah i don't have to deal with this nightmare yeah. so you the, the anger you get when you're trying to watch content yeah imagine me at four o'clock in the morning That's saturday morning saturday morning. <laughs> yeah not on a, not on a work night not on a work yeah night. but it's true uh, you know and, and this is the amount of money that's spent on that stuff and 
intruding yeah. intruding our day, robbing our time. Time is the most important thing we've got. Absolutely. And it's the thing that's the, the most precious thing and people are taking that for granted. Well, what, we we want to be a part of a world that where that's eradicated. Yeah. Um, one, one, one of the things, uh, it's all about new, new, new media, isn't it? New technologies and the way mm. to absorb technologies surrounding football. Yeah. And obviously the advertisers for, for are kind of stuck in the old way about intrusive adverts. So you imagine you're turning the newspapers uh, Sorry, I'm just reluctantly having this um, water. This, it's been in this, this is like the. I'm pretty uh, sure it's only a day or two old. This is like the Russian roulette of water. Like this could have been here for. for Give it a go. Months. See what it's like. It smells fine. <laughs> what are we saying? Tastes alright. I don't even know. Doesn't matter. You're hydrated now. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, so, so you're turning the page and then there's like a full page advert but in the middle of your story. It's the yeah. same principle now. So the change in, it's, it's sometimes difficult for these people to are stuck in the old way of thinking. Yeah. They're trying to apply old thinking to new technology and, mm. and you see a kind, of, a kind of bumping of heads of old styles and new styles yeah. and to work towards a more fluid um, environment where we can absorb adverts because yeah. that's essentially what funds and, and, and keeps the industry going. There's a, well, there's a trade-off, isn't there, ultimately? It's yeah. like if you're going to have something for free, you kind of... In a world where we're used to subscriptions, TV, especially in sport, yeah. um, if you're getting something for free, you kind of accept that there's some kind of trade-off, which is an advert yeah. or some kind of data or something like yeah. that. But when that advert actually ruins the experience, that's when it gets a bit awkward. There's an interesting story in football, actually, at the moment. Um, last week, a, a young man used Periscope to... Ah, yeah. the city thing. That's right, yeah. Record. Love that. He just, I mean, his old man went there and he said, I'm just going to record it. My dad was going to follow me on Twitter. He's going to watch the Periscope stream of the Man City versus uh, Palace at, uh, at Selhurst Park. Amazing. But 193,000 people <laughs> tuned in, which is probably, I don't know, one tenth maybe of the audience. One. What, what was the game on Sky? Was it on uh, TV? Uh, yeah. Or on BT? I think it was. Was it ad? Can you verify this? Your dad will be very disappointed in you there. Yeah. He's, um, he tells, oh, my dad's really proud of me. Yeah. It's really important, he's, my dad. Yeah, my he'll dad. He'll get you fired. Yeah. You cross me, my dad will fire yeah. you. And now his big moment comes and he doesn't even know. He's just asleep at the wheel over there. Uh, anyway, so whatever it is, they were broadcasting either a game that the, that the, the company had chose not to the broadcast or it was on, on telly. But like, lots of people tuned in. Um, I love and, that. And 200,000 people. Yeah. That's awesome. Madness, isn't it? Uh, and, and, he, and he had what, like a hundred Twitter followers? Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Like, just a guy. He just works in the local council. It's not love like, it. What? Um, but the Premier League took this position as like, we will clamp down on this. This will not be allowed to happen. Yeah. Um, and and you can understand it. Like from a Premier League pers perspective, they've mm. got a product that's yeah. very valuable. Yeah. That TV companies pay an, a, a huge amount of money to, to to broadcast, and the product also is syndicated throughout the world. So they're gonna, they are gonna clamp down hard on things that, um, that, that essentially devalue that product. Mm. Streams, yeah. Um, you know, high HD streaming on the internet yeah. that's becoming more prevalent now. It's pretty easy if you want to find it to find yeah. a very good stream. Yeah, it's almost as good as, t as television. Yeah. Like the Eubank fight was on Facebook Live, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, you could find it everywhere. Even though it was a uh, ITV box office. Box office. Yeah, I mean that. Shit, man. That was quite an interesting Look, subject. Actually. It is. Uh, the whole thing's really interesting. Mm. Um, and, and it's because ultimately it's money isn't it they've created value in the Premier League they've done it with the Champions League where alright all these top clubs will play these fixtures and then what they do is they sell that around the world to broadcasters and they sell that to sponsors mm. and create a whole load of money so then when someone starts to uh, uh, fuck with it and play with that and to access it for free they have obviously people that uh, the you know the first phone call will be Sky, will be BT, will be someone saying, "Hang on a minute, I'm paying you for this." So that that's where the pressure comes from, yeah. right? Money makes things happen in this world, um, so it makes it quite amusing then that Lado with 55 Twitter followers has reached an audience of 200,000 yeah. people. Um, it's kind of it shows you though where the world is though because you know this is something that's come through Twitter and, and through Twitter and it's like. You don't get these same companies trying to apply the same pressure when it comes to racism 
or when it comes to some form of of bullying or or you know something yeah. bad that, that that's so if that one guy had been the victim of some kind of hate crime or something like that on there they wouldn't care you know what I mean so so it's, it's always the way though isn't it the it, money the money yeah, drives it action. is it is but you know technology is is going so fast yeah that it's very difficult for legislation and, and for uh, for that status quo to kind of to catch up with it in a way yeah but more so. At the same time, because we're getting uh, entertained in so many different ways by so many different people, and not all of it is a live match through a Facebook Live. It could be people talking, or you know, YouTubers doing this, or but but there's lots of different ways now that we're entertained. Yeah. Now, 15 years ago, when the Premier League was in the the height of its powers and and viewing was such that you could only watch a certain number of channels, we were happy to pay. Um, 80 quid a month to get everything through Sky. Mm. Now, because, but we didn't have all the choice. Now the choice is there, and there's all these other ways that, that, that we spend attention and that we spend time. Um, th these subscription models, they're dying. You know, the ESPN is struggling in America, and they have just been ruling it for years. Um, the NFL audiences have been down, like, and they're like, hang on a minute, what the fuck? This is the NFL. Um, equally, look at like Sky subscriptions numbers are dropping. Yeah. So Sky have now started to not report their numbers of subscription, which they used to do. They've started to now, now TV, which they also own, they've started to throw these things in to create a bit of a blur. But what you're getting, and, and I know this is a guy because I I stopped uh, using Sky, which I've done a couple of times over the last 10 years. And each of those times, Sky have not dropped a price. I've been, all right, see you later, you'll be back. Really? Yeah. And then recently I did it just as I was moving house, I, I cancelled it. Mate, they were literally calling me, excuse me, Mr. Wilson, can we offer you a new deal? Yeah. Like, it was like, all right, well, half, at first they're like, yeah, 60 quid, then they're like, 40 quid, then they're like, We'll do you 30 quid for three months because they're desperate to keep you yeah. on. Because when they, when they, uh, so I think next year is the next uh, rights. So about two years into a, uh, into a three year period. Yeah. So one and a half years into a three year period. So next year is the, the, the new rights deal where yeah. they'll be wanting BT and Sky to go again and hopefully raise the bar. Now, I don't think that at that point in time, because I'm used to paying for subscription, but these 20 year olds and these 15 year olds ain't, they know that they can go online and they can find a fix, they can get a, uh, an Amazon, they can jailbreak an eye, uh, Apple TV or whatever, and they can find a way to get this shit for free. They expect stuff for free. So to go out and pay the Premier League 500 million or, or, or whatever billion dollars yeah. or pounds to fucking, to, to buy these rights for the next few years, that used to be underwritten by us, who'd be all paying eighty pounds a month. Now, now that that market's eroding, they can't sit there and promise the Premier League these huge numbers right. because otherwise they're going to go bust. Yeah. So it, because you know so they, they don't have the money coming in again. So so the whole TV broadcast market and around live rights is under pressure as it is. So little things like this, like some guy sitting there doing that, although I think fair play is using technology to let his dad watch the match yeah. and it's probably got the 15 heads and it's shit and it keeps cutting out. It's right. hardly like it's a competing product, is it, no, really? not at all. But, you know, it's one view from behind the goal with a pillar in front of it. Yeah. It's not like multi-cam and flashing round. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very think, interesting. Do you think we're potentially seeing, where, as you say, that where viewers are starting to drop, people are finding other means to watch their football without having to pay the extortionate prices that I think Sky Charge and BT Sports Charge. Um, do you think the bubble in the, that bubble is bursting? Because it, has, it's, it was never affected by yeah. changes in the economy. There is always a point with the kind of boom and bust yeah. uh, idea yeah. that we may be reaching that point where um, the Premier League will continue to demand the money it demands. Yeah. Clubs will con continue to expect yeah. that boost in, in their club finances yeah. so that they can continue to play yeah. the players and they want and pay all yeah. the wages they want. But then we, we, we're going to get to a point where actually Sky and BT are not willing to pay that yeah. because their customers are not willing to pay Yeah, of course they're not. And then what happens? Well, uh, yeah, it, it is interesting. So football's a bit different to, to other categories, right? And I'm probably not the most um, qualified guy to talk about this, you know. Mm. But I'm pretty certain that 
in football, it's not like all the top clubs got together and went, hmm, let's let's disrupt how this is, let's change it, let's let's do this thing with the Premier League, let's let's package it like that. It was ultimately it was led by Rupert Murdoch, it was led by Sky, mm. who approached them and said, Right, we're gonna give you this amount of cash for the next few years and it was far more than what they were getting before. Mm. And what we want is we want all your games to be on our platform and we'll pay you this amount of money and all the clubs went yeah all right that's a fucking load of cash i'll sign up to that yeah. right and that's what kind of that was the disruption of the model as it was before and that's when the premier league came and it all started to get different it was you could get all loads of football on the tv there was all this kind of uh, hyping around it and kind of ultimately creating the product that, that we, we kind of grew up watching now music for example has been very different to that Music's been disrupted a few times by technology. Do you remember um, Napster, yeah. you know, things like Spotify, like all this stuff's kind of completely changed the way that music kind of worked mm. from, from back in the day. But this was led by, not by the, the artists, you know, this is led by, by technology. Yeah. And football's been kind of protected to, to a degree. But a lot of people, I think, have been A, asleep at the wheel and they've just been feeding at that trough to the stage where they're so out of touch with it now that they, they don't even know how to make it. And you look at the FA. The FA is full of people, as we spoke about on a previous podcast, yeah. that A, are not motivated by change. Um, and what was it the guy said? It's a beautiful line. He said that they care more about when they're pudding served than whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't care. They're not interested in change because people get these positions in society and actually they just want things to, to stay the same because... I paid my mortgage, I've got mm. this job, I get to shake hands with whoever the manager is, you know, I get two tickets to every England game or whatever, and Do ultimately you... I'm paying for my mortgage and I've got a nice place in the south of France. I don't want the world to change. Of course. But technology's changing that we shit. We know you talk about the, the, the eating at the trough, and then the kind of heads down the trough yeah. and they can't see what's going on around them. Yeah. Is the reason why we get to watch, as a Spurs fan, if I wanted to, I could watch any game that we play this season. Because the, our games, along with the rest of the ones in the Premier League, have been syndicated around the world. There's TV cameras on everyone because yeah. there's 80 countries that 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 are that the Premier League brand has been has been pushed out to. So that means there are every game is broadcast. Yeah, and that greed to 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 generate a global interest in our sport and then make monetize it is actually made it easier for Joe Bloggs. To, 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 yeah. to find some weakness in that system. Yeah, the streams. Take that and then give it to you for, for one. free. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, it, and, it's, and you know as well, like, because one of the things that they're also, I think, going to be talking about if they're not already is Wi-Fi in stadiums yeah. and that whole culture around people sitting there filming stuff on their phones, that whole, you know, sitting there taking selfies and, yeah. and almost like, do you know what I fucking hate as well? My, my, my least favourite thing, right, is when the team's losing or something like that. And then, so they're sitting there watching their team lose. The Jumbotron comes along and picks them up. They notice they're on the scoreboard and they're like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what are you doing? I thought you were upset, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, the, all this technology coming into the game and coming into that fan experience is really kind of messing it up. Because I think there's people there that are like, what are you fucking doing? Watch the match. Yeah. But then there's people that are actually vlogging vlogging or, or even not even vlogging in a way that you're doing it as a professional or a semi-professional interest but you just kind of I'm at the match fucking check this out and yeah. you know look at this stuff yeah, even if yeah, it's just going that. to your your fucking 20 Snapchat followers or your 50 Facebook followers people are doing that stuff mm. and what that's effect, um, effectively doing is that that's having an impact on that in-stadium atmosphere right so in the stadium, the atmosphere people are finding the atmosphere is not the same when they've got the Wi-Fi turned on. I think there's a couple of clubs that have actually spent money getting Wi-Fi in there and mm. then have actually turned it off because it's kind of it's they don't like it. <laughs> they don't like what it does to the experience. But at the same mm. time, like you said, people are making growth. The Premier League's growing because once Sky and so on so paid, it's like right. China, let's sell this shit to China because that'll fucking and the more more territories that they sell the Premier League product to, um, the more money that they're ultimately making, and that's how they get growth. Mm. So they actually fucking don't even care about the fifty thousand people or the twenty thousand people that are in that ground. They just want it to look like good TV mm. for all the people that are around the world so that they continue to pay for it. So there's a lots of competing pressures and agendas that are happening. Yeah. Um, but you're right, I think it's Fucking mental. It's crazy. In a quite cool, fascinating. Way. Yeah, uh, it is fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Right, before before coming to Bull Street, I was going to do some work with a company that's that would put 
Wi-Fi into stadiums. Right. Um, that was one of the parts of their business, um, which you know, I didn't sit 100% comfortably with. Mm. Um, but you know, it, it is. I think it is coming. It's just a matter of time. I, I, yeah. like, like you said, I think fo- football clubs are concerned about what it will do to the atmosphere because yeah. a strong atmosphere is, builds uh, the brand, I guess. Um, Mark Ellison, uh, he asks, he's asked a question, um, watches every show, listens to a pod, big fan. Oh, of yeah, see Mark, he's yeah, a good lad. Uh, he said, Robbie versus Gary Neville, how far will it go? And will it lead? Because we've, we've talked about it, like it's been done to death over the last day or two, but I think what an interesting part to this question is, will it lead to more engagement with fan channels? Um, there's this kind of expression about the tip of the spear, and I think Arsenal yeah, Fan like TV are, ha- have been the the, the 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 fan channel to break into the mainstream it's become mm-hmm. a con they, they're you know gary neville is conscious of arsenal fan tv no matter how dismissive he was on that tv program yeah. last what Saturday. did he actually say he said that uh, he he said that it goes oh, i was I, I saw them as i was walking past that arsenal fan tv thing like that <laughs> and he did this this kind of gesture. <laughs> this dismissive gesture. Yeah, which love that. What he, what, I mean, the actually embarrassment thing side of things. Him saying that it was the views of some of the fans was embarrassing. Now that's subjective. That's his opinion. That's fine in my opinion because that's just opinion. In my as a, as a Spurs fan, I think Arsenal fans are embarrassing. But that's my role. It's my prerogative. Mm. But he's dis- I would never dismiss Arsenal fan TV as yeah. as not relevant. As not a uh, you know. Ha- a, a voice of a section of the fan base that's unfair you know it's not not it's not simply not true and to dismiss it in, in your ivory tower mm. uh, where you're able to have played the game and, and you yeah. know, you've done amazingly well and to where play you're the game. an analyst and now and, and to yeah. say oh, i can dismiss what they say yeah when truly they probably understand the nuances of the game as well as you maybe not playing them but the politics and yeah and the um the the, yeah. pr- the pressures on I mean, look, awesome it, yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? Because we've been, um, you know, Robbie's in our network. Um, yeah, we've worked with Robbie, worked in here all last year. You know, him and Tao every single day. Um, so, and we've been banging this drum for a, for a long time. Uh, we've done podcasts on it about fan media, uh, fan country. channels rising up, and ultimately people. Um, people not liking that change people don't like change mm. especially people that have got something to lose and that have got a place like we were talking about before people that have that have got a life that's happy it's oh I know I get paid this amount of money and, and I pay off my mortgage and I do this and that's the guy I am Gary Neville in his ivory tower or Carragher or, or any of them journalists you know even Henry Winter who might have wrote an article that was sympathetic to Arsenal fan TV a lot of these guys, right, have built up their whole lives. They're in a certain position. They don't want this change. What they want, and I think Nikki from West Ham Fan TV said it best, they don't want us to have a voice. They don't want us to have a platform. What they want us to do is to be good fans. Yeah. And good fans to them don't ask the difficult questions. Yeah. Good fans, they, they, what they do is they fucking they follow them on social media. They buy the tickets. They wear the fucking shirt. They turn up and clap when there's a new fucking signing. And they do everything that they're supposed to do as fans, you know? And at the same time, what's going on in this is there's a debate going on that I've seen whereby people are talking about, God, football clubs, why are you letting Facebook own your fans? Mm. It's like, hang on a minute, like, who owns the fans? Fuck you, the fans own the fans. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, they fucking do. It's like, they just look at us as, as, as customers, you know? That's what they look at. Mm. And they don't want us to do anything bad. They just want us to do what we're supposed to do, which is to keep and make our kids support it as well and buy them the little kit and get them hooked on it because they fucking want us to just keep paying for money. And this is the bit that troubles me because in football... The fans pay for everything. We buy the tickets, we buy the shirts, we pay the subscriptions. You know what I mean? We fill the stadiums, we create that whole fucking, that, that, that tension, that colour, that atmosphere. We do a hell of a lot. What we essentially do is we've built a table, we've fucking dressed it, we've put loads of food on it, but we're not sitting at the table feasting off it. Mm. There's players at that table, there's uh, agents at that table, there's broadcasters, there's clubs, there's f- all these motherfuckers, right, that are filling their guts and we're not. So, of course, Gary Neville, and I, I, I think Gary Neville's probably a nice guy and he's probably quite a bright guy, yeah. but he's embedded in this whole system. 
He's deeply embedded. They all are to the stage where they look at that and they, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and I've, I've, I remember this at TalkSpot. They'd say, you haven't got the right to talk about it unless you've played the game or you haven't got the right to it unless you're a qualified journalist. And it's wrong. Yeah. In this world, <coughs> what you've got to do, if you've got an opinion, you've got the right to show it. And this is what's amazing about technology. And you know what? You can, people can say that you're right or that you're wrong, but if you've got a platform and if you're interested enough, people find you charismatic, people find you interesting, then they'll watch. And you can then build an audience. And once you've built that audience and you've got that leverage, then you can do a hell of a lot of stuff. And you can see, I tell you, it's not going to be long before they're going to they're going to to rob it, and they're begging him to come on and do a fucking job on there because he's going to be far more interested than someone that's been trained to speak in a certain way. You know, what I'm, you know what I mean? Well, absolutely. I think that what the one thing you said about trained journalists is, I I think if anyone if anyone should be angry at Robbie, I should be right because. I went through university. I paid a shitload of money to try and learn how to become a journalist because I thought that that was my route into this industry. Well, it was when you went to school. That was what it what, what the route was. It was indeed. But what I think there is bitterness from people like in the mainstream media because they see that essentially Robbie is created. It's like the mainstream are not going to listen to me. The same thing with the fighting cock when we created it. Yeah. I, I, wa- I was less interested in what the mainstream were talking about Tottenham. I wanted to hear what other fans wanted to talk about because there wasn't much out there. I thought I'd really build it myself. Uh, Robbie has created That's why something. fanzines. That's why we all used to love fanzines yeah. because it was what the fans were thinking. It was the jokes of the fans. It spoke in the language of the fans rather than treating them like they're beneath them, which, let's face it, media does. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, the media has been treating fans, the whole game's been treating fans. Uh, they've been taking it for granted. That's what they've been doing for a long period when, of time. When there's more, but, but, when the, go on. sorry, just the one thing I was going to say on it, right? It's not about if uh, if Arsenal like what you. I mean, because I think I can understand why when Arsenal lose and you've got people saying things that Arsenal fans get upset with it. I understand that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not fucking stupid. I understand that, right? Mm. But however, what essentially that is, that whole channel, that's just the story of a bunch of different guys that kind of see things a little bit differently, telling the story of their experience and their love for that football club. Mm. That's what that is, it's as simple as that. Mm. It's a bunch of guys that are, that are letting you in, letting you see their views and, and how they feel about it. And I'm telling you now, right, you could go to every single football club up and down the uh, the land and there's a fucking tie and there's a DT and there's a so-and-so, you know, all these characters because there are people that are easily angry there are people that are overly optimistic there are people that are fucking negative there are people that sit on the fa- you know what I'm saying you go into any forum and that's what you get you go to any football match you get these people you get arguments you get all this tension yeah. but theirs just happens to be that this is in the public domain well we had a question similar to that from a, a guy called Dougie Vale he says do fans overreact when they see their teams win or lose and and actually the, to flip this because obviously it's easy to be kind of focused on that negative aspect when a team wins a couple of games, and that team might have been on telly, <laughs> and it might have been against one of the top teams in the league, well, and it might have been against your your local rivals. Yeah. So this what week you've come out like th- we've had it on this podcast, yeah. Matt. Right? You've said, well, we 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 could win the league. We're not going to win the league. Ah, oh, it's over. The dream's over. I think I'm done. To you walking in like the absolute dog's bollocks. Ten men just, in a wetsuit. Yeah. <laughs> I have. I've been. Te- I have been. Almost unbearable, but that's, in a way I, I just didn't expect. I, I honestly was like, "Oh, Brighton thing, it's going to be over by the end of this." Yeah, and we fucking pumped Brighton. What was it three one? Three three one, and it's going to have been ten nil. Really, be yeah, that good? We, yeah, we murdered Brighton. Yeah, like they, they they couldn't even. We were just above them. We were super. I can't believe I'm saying we were superior. And they've been we great. Pressed, this yeah, they, they've only conceded about. 15, 16 goals. We got three. Should have been about ten. We gave them their goal from a defense from an error. Yeah. Um, and we were just we were incredible. But better than that. I mean, that was great. Yeah, it was good. But Leeds. Who? Who? Of all Who? Dirty, dirty Leeds. The Leeds. Yeah. But they're the champions of Europe. They won't be in our division. <laughs> the champions of Europe no. against little old Huddersfield. No, 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 no. That can't be right. Hang on a minute. Let me assure you. We did. <laughs> we beat Leeds two one. Yeah. Get it up here! How, how, how fierce is that rivalry, and how important was that victory for you, and what did it make you yeah. feel like? Because I'm leading to the Fucking point amazing. based on what yeah. you. Me, um, so there's a guy called March on Together who, who comments on our videos. He's gonna fucking hate this. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, this is part sorry, of it. mate. Suck uh, it up, mate. No, I, I, I'm fine with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, we won. We got a double over them. I have a feeling. Um, 
So what's the rivalry? I grew up in Wakefield, a place full of Leeds fans. I live on the, the Leeds side of Wakefield. My uncle made me support Huddersfield as a kid. I used to hate it. It was miserable. Fucking Huddersfield in the 80s, not cool. No. Um, and so I and Leeds have always been kind of the bigger club, bigger city, bigger catchment area, you know, fill out their grounds or whatever. So they're taught down to you. Mm. Um, and yeah, we've um, we, we kind of always do all right against them. But the beautiful, we've got a double over them this year. Uh, a lot of my mates still talk to on Facebook, Leeds fans. Um, Did you give it some on Facebook? No, I didn't actually. I've it was what was great is on the build up to it because they've they've had a great run and they're like racy uh, and angry Dave. They're like, oh yeah, super Leeds. And literally, they fucking can't help themselves. As soon as they get these wins together, they're like, oh, Monk's amazing, so and so. Fucking literally second. We we can get second. We can get new. Like really fucking. They expect, but that's the big club mentality versus yeah. the small club mentality. I'm yeah. like, no way. Even now, I'm like, they'll finish above us. Whereas they're like, we're going to fucking win the league. Yeah. And they were building it up. And I was just like, all right, well, you know, don't sleep on yeah. on us. And, you know, we're playing quite well, but it should be an interesting game. And, <laughs> and uh, mate, fucking hell. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. So this is what I'm talking about, right? Is it, is it, what, are, your, what what is the psychology behind a football fan who's so deeply influenced? And you're, Adam, you might want to respond to this as well as a Brentford fan. Busy, right? busy, 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 busy. Have you started that yet down the? Uh, yeah. yeah, it didn't catch on. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Zzz, zzz, tried that one yet? No, I'll try it next week. Okay. <laughs> but what what is it about football fans that allow the allow their football team to influence them so severely? Because I'm the same. I, I, when when we lose, when we get you know when we have a bad result. I, feel it like nothing else has made me feel ever in my life. Like not even the worst kind of terrible influence from all kinds of bad things that you think are good at the time. Um, you know, the, the impact of, of, of getting beaten by Arsenal is severe. Yeah. It feels horrible. Yeah. I, what, what, and, and, and how are we, how are we so quickly turned around by, by a win? Like, so a couple of weeks ago you were saying nothing we, we're all right. It was mm. good while it lasted. You know, we're not scoring that many goals to this point where you think a little part of you is, we are going to win this league. <laughs> and 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 what what attracts us to, to to invest in something that can destroy us or, or build us up so quickly? Is it because of that what very knows? thing? Is I mean, it because of that very thing? Matt? It's madness, isn't it? Uh, f- fucking crazy. I, I don't even know. What's the question? Be- vicar- you're living your life vicariously through. No, your I'm not. Team. I, I'm not actually. Like fucking my what? life's my life. Yeah. I, I've. You're saying Mate, you can walk away. I'm a Huddersfield fan, right? So I've never been I've been in a position to depend on them for happiness <laughs> or, or anything. Because any time, literally, as a small town club, any time that we've got to a position where we've got a big game mm. or where we... You know, like sometimes you get those crossroad games in a season where you've maybe built up and then you play the top... And if you win, you probably won't know this, but if you win, then you go level with them on points. If you lose then there's six points ahead and you're kind of going to miss out. Mm. Whenever we usually get to those games, the real ones where we need to win and, and that extra few thousand fans come because it's a big game, we always, we don't we don't turn up. Mm. So that's why I was going into this thing thinking again, yeah, Brighton and Leeds, no way. And the fact that we, we, we I won't say smashed them both because the Leeds game was tight, they're tough, they're a strong side, um, but we deserve to win both games and we did. So... This is a new feeling for me, Flav. Mm. This is a new feeling. See, I've always been able to turn off the bad feelings. I've always been able to enjoy Tottenham when they're great and hold on to what I love about Tottenham when yeah. they're bad. All right, I, I've been able to do that. But then the I'll gallows wa- humour kind of thing. Or? And then, yeah, yeah. Well, just no, no. Just being able to when Spurs are playing poorly, I can say I can accept that that's happening and remember that I have an amazing football club to belong to and have given me all all kinds of brilliant yeah. memories. And then when we're great, I'm in it. I'm like, we're going to win the league now. Yeah, this is yeah, how yeah, I am. Yeah, the yeah. arrogance is coming in. The yeah. old small club mentality is gone. Yeah. Spurs are bigger than, and better than Arsenal now. That, yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. But then I watch I watch people like uh, DT, and it feels like he's so emotionally invested in Arsenal and, and how they perform on the pitch that he's unable to do that. And do you yeah. know what? We're going to be able to ask him because he's coming on the Long Ball Street podcast. Yes. I know you've been pushing. I've been for wanting DT for ages. I've been like, I fucking love DT. By the way, I know you do. I know you do. He is like, I'm not saying I agree with everything he says. I don't even know what the fuck he says. Like, I don't. I don't sit here and watch this shit religiously. Like, yeah, I yeah. don't. However, I when he looks down that fucking lens and talks, mm. it is 
fucking beautiful. You just sucks you right in. You're like, fuck it. His amazing delivery of lines and actually quite intelligent. He played football with us. Um, yeah, uh, if he's on, I'm delighted with that. That's wicked. Yeah, he that's is. Good. He is on. I'm not necessarily delighted. No, you're not going to enjoy that. But, you know, he's uh, he's an interesting character. And, and I, that's one of the things I want to ask him about is that how, you know, how, how, how he copes when he's so emotionally investing. Clearly he is. I mean, whether or not you agree with the way he portrays himself in Arsenal yeah. on, on camera, that's one thing. But what, yeah. the thing you can't say about him is that he's completely committed to his football career. Yeah, it is weird though, isn't it, right? Because w w in work, right, the, you know, that whole... Th and it must be really bad for people in London. Like, it's not really for me because I'm a championship. You don't... You don't we do here because we've got Brentford, we've got QPR, we've got Charlton, you know. And not, uh, so we know a few guys. Yeah. But most places where they go to work... It's really you're going to be Leeds. Uh, sorry, you're going to be Man U, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea. Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs. That's probably going to be it. You probably won't get many Man City fans, will you? No. So, Good. when you've got to then go into work and you've lost one of these games, I think that's what creates the pressure. You know, it's it's almost like that thing, isn't it? Because mm. people can have a go at you, and you're like, mm. "Fucking ain't that guy yeah. in." accounts or whatever like yeah, yeah. you know what I mean people hold that over you like when it's mm. like they've done it themselves you know what I mean mm. it's like they've they've put you've both been out trying to pull the same bird and they've pulled the bird and they're yeah. all just like hey mate fucking yeah, yeah what smell you, this you go home on your own did you yeah. fucking smell my fingers yeah. that's what he's that's like, what like that's Arsenal fans. but it's like but hang on a minute just because you fucking support a team that happened to win it's yeah. a weird thing yeah. really yeah it's like it's, got, it's had nothing to do yeah, with you. You it's have not done you. nothing. And, and they go, you we. Can lord it over me. Yeah. You've done nothing at all yeah. and you can lord it over me. That's, that is I, the And I hate that, like, because I was Huddersfield fan, you had that one. Like, oh, yeah, it's for Huddersfield. <laughs> Huddersfield. Like, fucking hell. Huddersfield, like, yeah, I'm fucking. I'm Liverpool, me, like. <laughs> yeah, we want league. For, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, you didn't fucking do it, did you? Yeah, exactly. You're just a guy. You're just I could have supported him. I could go, yeah. Once. Do you know what? I support fucking Real Madrid. I support Messi. There are people Fuck out you. there. There are out there, people yeah. out there that feel it's that. It's madness. Exactly. I'm born near there. I support that team. Fuck Their yeah. shit. Yeah. So what? Yes. It don't fucking stop me having my life. How many Gooners are born in South London near Woolwich? Oh, now, you, now you're trying to pull me into None. your narrative. Uh, I, your, I do it. You're on board. They're all on board. Yeah. James is on board. James never used to mind Arsenal. Now he's in now he, he hates them. Don't say that. He'll fucking go get, they'll kill him for that on his uh, next appearance. What? Little James. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, he's beautiful. He wouldn't, wouldn't the, um... The other thing, right, I support an American football team yeah, and I got into outrageous. them as a kid and I still support them. And I've supported them for fucking... Why did you choose them? Just like, Do you know what, right? It was a mixture of things. Is it a pirate? A, there were... I love a pirate. Yeah. Who doesn't love a pirate? Do you know what I mean? Arr. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the goal? Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> what the plank. Um, so A, it was a bit of a pirate. B, they were a bit of a bad team, which, mm. you know, and they were... I quite like, uh, if there's something really popular in Shiny, I tend to prefer the underdog, the challenger brand. Uh, but also, like, I really got into, uh, I like hip-hop. Yeah, NWA. And it was Ice Cube, NWA, and, yeah. um, you know, the Raiders gear, so it kind of triangulated it well. But I supported them throughout my life, and I've, they've had years of disappointment. And But you've just got that fucking thing in you that makes you keep coming back, even though it's yeah, weird. It is weird. Because it's like even as a football fan, you'd get relegated or you'd have a shit season and you're just like, you, the people that you've been sitting with or standing with, you talk about it and you're like, this is shit, this manager's shit, everything's shit. Right, see you next season. Yeah, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like, it is. I, I, you know what would be a fascinating part is to get a psychologist who studied this and what, what happens in the brain when you attach yourself to a football club or yeah. an, an NFL club. I'm pretty sure that people have, um, a lot of people with depression, I think there must be, it must be connected to it. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it must be, and and it's, it's funny as well. <laughs> my, so my uncle, um, he doesn't go to the football anymore. He's who took me as a kid, right? And I fucking love my uncle. We spent a lot of time going to watch town all over. Um, him and a couple of his mates, and then my his kids, you know, when they're a bit younger, to be Dan who was here. You remember Dan? Yeah. He came and did some work with us. Um, me and him going QPR on Saturday, um, but we, we'd go to the football, right? And then he started to kind of he had. A, couple of heart problems and they said going to the football's bad for you and the, it, we'd be going to the game and he'd have to like sit down sometimes and he'd be taking a minute and you know people it, lots of tense. heart attacks at football yeah so he, do. so he, he doesn't really go uh, a, him, anymore yeah. right but they play we play Brighton and, and Dan watched it with him and Dan was telling me he's like, Wait, he's like he went to the game <laughs> 
No, they watched it oh, on they Sky. Together, right, right. They watched it on Sky. Yeah. And um, I remember they did go to the game. But he was basically just telling me, he's like, that he says, be a great he says, video, he says yeah. we're 3-1 up. Brighton had given up. We were deep in injury time. And he's just like, he was fucking still just terrified. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, literally, just fucking like, <laughs> just say he's just terrified. You can relax now. Yeah, I know. It's like, look, it's, we've never been as good. We're, 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 but he's just so affected by years of being yeah, let down. Indoctrinated, he, into, he knows. Into, indoctrinated into failure. Bless him. But that is an amazing story. Should we um should we round it up yet? Yeah, is that, is that it? I'm, I'm, yeah, was it? yeah, that's fine. What was it? That'll do. Can we talk to Adam a bit? Yeah. What do you want to ask? All right, Ad. All right. Are you enjoying your time at Ball Street? Yeah, I am very much. Have you been on camera yet? Yeah, had a debut on the Yeah, transfer with transfer, deadline. that's right. How did that How go? How did you feel? Because I, I, I said I, you did really good, but you I said felt, you was I nervous. I didn't really enjoy it. I oh, felt really? like I choked a bit, but no, I didn't. No, not that's at all. probably... Um, more of a feeling than a reality because it's an awkward Maybe, thing yeah. for the first time. Mm. Well, do, do, do you see your future as being, as being what exactly? Um, probably not on camera. Mm, I think okay. you should go on for that camera. Do you? Yeah, I think you could, you could show a lot of women a good time <laughs> <laughs> and being on camera opens doors. <laughs> think on, Adam. Just think about it. Have you got a girlfriend, Ad? Um, no, I'm single. Have you really? <laughs> Oh, you beg to differ, you're no, hearing other things. No, or? I'm just thinking of all of the da not damage, because that's the wrong word, all of the, the the entertaining that Adam could do with a face like that. You wouldn't know because you haven't watched him, but he is <laughs> a stunning young chap. Yeah. We've got, yeah, we've okay. got quite a good looking, no, good looking bunch. I can hold my own. I, I, can hold. I mean, you're obviously married and that now, but I imagine back in the day, terrible things. I mean, I'm guessing. <laughs> And James was, we had the, <laughs> that, the Sophie girl, didn't we, on the um, oh, yeah, uh, Sophie Rose. social club this week. Sophie Rose of, of Chelsea, CFC. She wasn't as, pre as pretty as James. I know, I know. The thing, what cracked me up about that is how how our audience, everyone just fell apart, didn't they? It yeah. was dead weird. But it was weird, like, we because we don't really have enough women on. No, I think uh, I think you should bring more women in. Yeah. Um, and... And you know Sophie held her own. She's good. I mean, she's she, she is aesthetically pleasing to lots of young men. I That's imagine, right. You know, a lot of 14, 15 year old young men would look at Sophie. Some of the comments think, made me laugh. Uh, some people talked about drinking her bath water. Bath, birth water. Bath water. Bath. Well, birth water would be very different and very. <laughs> that would be hell. a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, <laughs> sorry, yeah. You can just tell where I've been. Over um, there. And uh, yeah, so the, the reaction was, but she was there for her. her for her, her, the way she could talk about football, and that was that was it. But yeah, the reaction to her being on camera was um, it was not surprising. Although, if I had to make love to either Sophie Rose or James, James, it would be yeah. it would be James. It, yeah, it's got to be, and it is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, ties here in the nipper. So let's see. Is he? Call it a day. See you at the far Brilliant. post. See you at the far post.